Hello, so this is the, uh, or it should be the last bit of wiring to do on this little board before uh, it's ready for power checking and uh, me actually doing a, a bit of a program to put into uh, see if it works. Uh, take me a while to get back to it, uh, just due to work and things, it's been a bit hectic. So anyway. Hopefully I've got all the uh, stuff sorted out ready. I'm prepped. So uh, there's not a lot now to connect, I don't think. It's basically the switches to the pull-ups and back to the IC pins and the various connections from the serial to parallel driver IC also back to the uh, processor module pins there. Now the logic supplies for, or the, and the port supply both come from the 3.3 volts, so it stays compatible with the 3.3 uh, volt CPU on that uh, little module. So not a lot. Um, hopefully it won't take all that long. So um, I need to wire the switches first, then to the pull-ups, which are on that one. Um, and then loop back into the process module. So I'm going to go from the far end of the switch, just uh, so I've got a bit more wire to work with, relative to the resistor. Pin one is at that end. I'll work down in sequence from there. Somewhere there. Just these four, I believe, are the solar connections to the switch pins, and the rest of it's only wrapped at both ends. Staying in the camera field of view. I think so from somewhere out here, aren't I? Now I've got a quite a backlog of other files to edit and other projects to actually record. I think you'll find there's some interesting stuff coming up. Okay, so that's, that's those four. They need now linking on to the appropriate pins on the IC, on the you know, module. Um, the processor module is that way around. So it's 25, 26, 27, 28 by the numbering on that pin one being there so it starts at the fifth pin down that side and works down
isn't it? It's a little bit on the tight side, but it'll be okay. that exciting a thing to watch now after you've seen a few of these but uh, it's not far off done and uh, I didn't want to just leave it incomplete and leave people wondering what was happening with it so I do want to use it as a demo for the videos later on just on the principles of multiplexing grabbing a little bit then you careful sometimes when the wrap the insulation wraps going over well you can see but the insulation wrap goes over the end of the previous wrap when you're stacking them and just occasionally it can be start to build up so it gets very tight in the end of the tool you've got to be a bit gentle with it or so you can just break the wire just uh, try kind of wobbling the tool slightly so you can get the get the wrap to lay in place better or loosen it up for just a fraction without you know, losing the wrap completely and just back off slightly and try again <laughs> lighting is weird sometimes when I don't do it like that because it's behind the camera, it's a funny angle. the uh, pull-up resistor common pin connecting to the 3.3 volt output from that module so that's that one pin one there and that goes to 3.3 volt is the third pin down on the other side. There. Well, there. I think the, the internal regulators on these modules can supply about 100 milliamps or so to external devices, possibly more depending on the exact type of module. So it's pretty safe on the resistors. I mean, you can run displays from even small displays that take uh, you know, 50 milliamps or something. Right, so that's the switches and the pull-ups connected. The last bit are the four wires to the serial driver. The pins two, three, four for date, clock and data. And the third, no, oh, sorry, 15 from the 3.3 volt pin. A bit more wire around ready. So 
So that's that way around. So pins two. That's the clock input, and that goes or comes from pin twenty two, PB thirteen. That's that one. Oops, almost wrong side. That one. Yeah. Not the same side as power. Here's the data into the driver, which is it's been an SPI device effectively, using separate clock and data. That comes from twenty four. First one above the switch wires. And pin four is strobe, and that goes to pin twenty one. That transfers the data from the shift register to the output register to drive the actual signals. So you can preload it then transfer it with a single pulse or clock edge. That's that one. Yeah, and that leaves the third pin down unused. That's correct. I suppose that's an advantage of this. If you wanted to use uh, a bit by your software drive, you could do because the time is not critical because it only actually updates the segments when you give it that uh, load signal. So, uh, yeah, the strobe. So, you, won't get any, you can still do it in software relatively slowly without getting any, any display flickering because of it. Right, and use the logic supply to that, also coming from the 3.3 volt. And this, that's a dual supply chip. There's one for the chip register input section. There's another one for the power driver output section. So it's got a logic supply and a load supply. So pin 15 is the logic supply. Which is next to the top of that side. Binding a bit, you notice it wrapped around a bit, it pulled in a bit, it means there's more wire than normal, more insulation than normal, just starting to go around the base of it when it gets a bit tight. So now that chip does need ground and power connecting, because at the moment it's got nothing on those pins, I believe. No. So my ground reference is that what would be pin 8 on the resistor array package and those tracks that run across the middle. That's my, that's my ground reference. So the ground on that is pin 
פלמון. פלמון... bridged to ground with solder. And the ground on that is uh, those top two or the next to the bottom one. Those top two, 19 and 20, are both ground. And conveniently, that very top track there is also ground. We're using that for the switches and transistors. So I can just solder bridge that one in to put a good ground on that. Take that a couple across there. This. Some people think this looks ugly, but it is very, very effective. There you go. That's uh, pin 20 on that device connected to a very, very solid to that same ground connection. I also connect the other end with a wire amp. Just helps link everything together. That ground there is the next to the bottom pin there. It's pin 39. That's there. And again, I want to put that onto that same pin. Right, so the only thing to connect on that now is uh, power supplies, check the connectivity and voltages and uh, program up the device. So that's going to take a while, I can't do anything about the program, I don't want to do much without uh, a program to make it do things. So that's that for now, that's the end of the wire wrapping and general assembly of that until I test it. So I hope it's been of interest and thanks for watching.